Welcome to the CABC's 27th Annual State of the Relationship Gala. Our show will begin in less than 15 minutes. Do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? How the music can free her whenever it starts and it's magic. I'll tell you about the magic and the free your soul But it's like trying to tell a stranger about a rock and roll Oh, you believe in 
And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid Oh, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me So dark
for being a Finish up your drinks and grab a seat. The show will begin in less than a minute. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, bonjour, buenas tardes. The relationship between Canada and America has been one of the closest and strongest in history. Probably no other country on this planet shares our values as closely as does Canada. There's a lot of great things uh, that I love about Canada. As John Diefenbaker once said, our peoples are the products of the same hope, faith, and dreams. I know that our shared values for inclusive growth will continue to be a guiding principle. There's no relationship more important than that of the people of our two great countries. The strength of our relationship has always been our people. It is our most important allies and we share the same values. We share the world's longest international undefended border. When I grew up, I didn't realize we were two different countries. Crossing between the two is no different in their life than literally crossing outside their city limits. Which is why I will continue my work to ensure this strong connection continues to grow and thrive. Sustaining our country's important, long-standing friendship and relationship. The USMCA is a great example of how these two nations can work together. The agreement, as you know, modernized trade among our closest trading partners. And now more than ever, we must build upon that relationship to meet our greatest challenges. It's all about poutine sales. Canada has to drive higher poutine sales in the United States to make sure that we're all happy up this way. The U.S.-Canada bilateral trade relationship has been at the center of America's international economic policy since the founding of our republic. Our supply chains are integrated and our mutual economic recovery will rely on each other. It is critical that we resume normalized trade and travel between our nations. This decision was long overdue. We've missed our neighbors to the north. Post-knit border cities and towns that are bound not only by commerce and trade, but by a sense of community. 
I've always been a firm believer in the value and importance of looking outside our borders to build strong, productive, and mutually beneficial international partnerships. It's great to have a wonderful partner like Canada on the front lines with us. Our closest trading partner and security ally. And we'll continue to play a key role in the future success of both nations. We continue working together to tackle the global challenges that are before us. We together will help define the future of the world at large. We must always remember how important we are to each other. The ties that bind us with people, our common values and history. This partnership will only grow stronger. Trade, investment, travel, military and more. We're critical partners on many levels. And when we work together, both countries are stronger for it. It's my hope that our two countries can continue our strong economic relationship. Let's continue our relationship as we continue to grow closer together and move forward together. We are friends, neighbors, and allies, and partners. We couldn't be prouder to be on the team with you. I understand that Canada is one of the largest consumers of American peanuts. Canadians can thank Georgia's 2nd Congressional District for producing what I and many others believe to be the best peanuts in the world. Good evening, I'm Christine Spiro coming to you live from Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, we are celebrating the bonds that unite our two countries and recognizing those working to strengthen that relationship. Now, I grew up in Rochester, New York for part of my childhood and I remember when I was eight, we visited Niagara Falls, so I think that makes me a Canada-U.S. relationship expert, right? Move over, ambassadors. I'm coming for your jobs. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. We are thrilled this year to be able to have some of you join us in person. In fact, there are a number of in-person events this year in cities around the U.S. and Canada, so a big wave to all of you out there. And then, of course, a special welcome to those of you tuning in from your couch. We will be having some floor length video check in, so make sure to change out of your sweatpants, please. I kid. But in light of our diverse meeting spaces this year, we will be including some interactive elements to the evening. So make sure to scan that QR code so you can join in on the fun. And before we go any further, we must stop and thank all of our sponsors. We are grateful for your support in making not only a fun evening for all of us, but your efforts on behalf of our joint relationship. Our gratitude, especially to Capital Power, CN, Johnson & Johnson, Enbridge, and Rio Tinto, as well as to Air Canada, CAE, Lockheed Martin, MasterCard, and Pfizer. And of course, to all of our sponsors this evening, thank you. And also, you will not want to miss out on this. As part of tonight's festivities, we will be having a giveaway I know what you're thinking, Christine, I already have a CABC tote bag. Well, it's not a tote bag. It is two round-trip airline tickets, courtesy of sponsor Air Canada. I know, right? After the last 20 months, I need a vacation. I'm sure you do, too. So make sure to keep your ears perked because later in the show, we're going to tell you how to win those tickets. We have a great program for you tonight. But before we look to the future of our prosperous relationship, let's take a look back. We've worked together a long time, and especially in the last 18 months, we found ourselves in a unique position. But despite a long closure of the border, our relationship has still been able to persevere, once again proving there is no greater friendship between two countries in the world. Majestic natural bounty parallel to none, the largest freshwater system in the world, and a reminder that Canada and the United States relationship flows both ways. It's full of love, it's full of mutual support. Sometimes it's, there's some sadness in there, but it's, we're family and, uh, and we're deep, deep friends who are always there for each other. Canada sending hundreds of firefighters to the Western US to battle intense fires and working with the US to prevent disasters ahead. It's teamwork unparalleled among nation states ensuring both security and, as history reminds us, a lasting friendship built on both cooperation and goodwill. The thing that binds us together as countries is our people. A home away from home tested in recent years with an intense renegotiation of our trade agreement 
differences surrounding infrastructure priorities, and the long closure of the border impacting our integrated way of life, families, and prosperity. Canada is our greatest ally, and our long-standing international friendship has created economic opportunities and growth on both sides of the border for more than a century. Working together despite challenges, allowing essential commerce to continue to flow, now we celebrate a reopening, not only of our border, but of our integrated way of life, which reminds us that strong relationships are built during both the peaks of shared triumphs and the valleys of disagreement. We're facing tough times, there's no doubt, but we're not facing them alone. Canada and the United States are each other's closest allies, most important trading partners, and oldest friends. On the democracy front, as founding members of NATO, our two countries' fundamental support of one another and our European partners have led to unprecedented peace and prosperity in the alliance. And with our NORAD partnership, we work to defend our shores, protecting our people and critical infrastructure from new and emerging threats. It's because our soldiers fought shoulder to shoulder on the battlefield all the way from the First World War up until present day. We are friends, allies, and partners. In our history, we have seen the helping hand between neighbors, none more evident than in 1917, a freighter explosion in Halifax Harbor. In an instant, 2,000 were killed, thousands more injured and the governor of Massachusetts not waiting, immediately sending a train with doctors, nurses, and medical supplies, because in challenging times, friends step up. In 2021, Halifax is of course rebuilt, but its people continue to remember, sending Boston the best Christmas tree in its province each holiday season. Together, we continue to face challenges, this time for the future of our planet. The US and Canada lead the way in resource responsibility, stewarding one of the oldest environmental treaties in the world. Now a new path forward as the United States and Canada revamp climate policies, starting with a strengthened implementation of the Paris Agreement, collaboration in Glasgow, boosting both clean energy and conservation efforts. Our commitment to the prosperity and preservation of natural resources is paramount to us both, as we innovate to decarbonize, reducing net emissions. For more than 100 years, we've enjoyed one of the closest relationships between any two countries in the world. That close relationship seen in our trade partnership with nearly $2 billion of goods and services traded every day. Beginning with free trade in agricultural equipment, and culminating by establishing free trade between our two countries. More recently, the implementation of the USMCA, securing economic stability moving forward. It's critically important to facilitate the free flow of commerce and trade between our borders. And when facing challenges in the natural peaks and valleys of our international relations, we stand reminded by the words of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, quote, there must never be a final word between friends. We must all come together to succeed. I believe that we are entering a new era of growth and friendship. For over 30 years, the Canadian American Business Council has been working to foster critical dialogue, celebrating that which unites us and working through disagreements to the benefit of both Canada and the U.S. Advancing forward because we're more than bordering countries. The United States is no closer and no more important friend than Canada. Our relationship is built on a familial cornerstone of collaboration and trust, providing a foothold during valleys, pushing us forward to climb the next peak together. It's been not only a long-standing relationship, but a productive one, even despite limitations this last year with the pandemic. As you all know, the last year saw an un unprecedented closure of our border, but tonight we celebrate because we are back open. So as we continue our fun this evening, let's see how well you know your landmarks, especially as there are some 
you may have missed across the border. All right, so if you take a look at your screen, you're going to see an extreme close-up of a landmark, and it's up to your keen eye to see if you can spot what it is. Everybody ready? Let's put the first one up. And zoom out a bit, because surely you all know this one. It's in the Big Apple. Lady Liberty herself, the Statue of Liberty. All right, ready for another one? Okay, I'm going to be very offended. Let me just say this. If you do not recognize this spot, as it is literally in my backyard. Anybody feeling inklings of Olympic glory, Michael Johnson, the golden shoes? Yes, it's Atlanta's Centennial Park. All right, let's go for another one. Ready? What's that in the sky? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a shiny light up ball. Anybody get it? I'm going to give you a hint. Remember, everything's bigger in Texas. It's Reunion Tower in Dallas. All right. Now, every Torontonian here tonight should have gotten this one. It's the tallest building in Canada. Do you recognize it? The CN Tower. Have any of you actually done the edge walk around it, by the way? Goodness gracious, I think I'm going to be a hard pass on that one. But eating inside at the 360 restaurant, well, I am here for that. All right, also for you trivia buffs, did you know that CN just announced its commitment to be net zero by the year 2050? Now that's what I call efficient transport. All right, let's see the reveal on this next one. Zoom it out. It's everyone's favorite former wasteland turned cultural arts hub, Granville Island. All right, here we go. Now it's time for the power lifters, all right? Anybody catch that pun? Power, get it? Power station is your clue here. It's the Genesee Generating Station in Alberta. The station is operated by Capital Power, which believes in responsible energy for the future. All right, if you have an eye for this last one, perhaps you are an energy buff, which will help you here as well. Take a close look. What do you see there? All right, it is the Alberta Solar One Project, part of Enbridge's energy initiative that shapes the world around us, doing it safely, reliably, and sustainably. Okay, so who got at least five, six, all seven? Not bad. Remember, there is still more fun to come. We still have that airline ticket giveaway, and we will have all the details about signing up for that a little later in the show. Now, please join me in welcoming the chair of the CABC, Jennifer Sloan. Jennifer? On behalf of the CABC board, thank you for joining us this evening as we celebrate the successes of our two countries, as well as the leadership by those in both the public and private sectors in moving our bilateral relationship forward during a historic and unprecedented time. The last year, we at CABC have been like many of you, virtual. But despite pandemic challenges, we continue to foster critical dialogue through events like our Congressional Town Hall series and our virtual roundtable on collaboration on critical minerals processing and our corporate action on social justice town halls. And a special thank you to board directors Clint Odom and Gary Clement for your incredible series and leadership in this area. This evening, we have a great program lineup and it really wouldn't be possible without our board host committee. Thank you, Pierre Pune of Bombardier, Nancy Zuzin of Lockheed and Marlene Floyd of Microsoft. Thank you for your time and talents in putting together this special night and also two members of our diplomatic community, U.S. Consul General Susan Crystal in Toronto and Canadian Consul General Rachel McCormick in Dallas were integral to this evening's planning. Thank you as well for your time, wise counsel, and being here tonight, and most important, for your service to our country. Well, last year we were all on our couches with our slippers hidden underneath our ball grounds and tuxedos. This year we are thrilled to be hosting gatherings across our two countries. In Atlanta, Calgary, Dallas, Detroit, New York, Providence, in Ottawa, in Toronto, Vancouver, and Washington, D.C. 
It is great to be back face to face in 2021. We are thrilled to be with you tonight. Please enjoy the evening. Thank you, Jennifer. And now I'd like to take a moment to recognize the fine folks at the Canadian American Business Council who do tremendous work, not only in setting up this fancy shindig for all of us to enjoy tonight, but who work year round to ensure conversations are being had, partnerships are being formed, and even those not so fun policies are being negotiated. The Canadian American Business Council is the champion that brings together the public and private sectors, legislatures and business leaders, navigating our unique relationship to the benefit of both our countries. Over three decades ago, we emerged as a powerful bilateral voice, advocating for cross-border commerce, laying the foundation for the most prosperous relationship in the world. We helped set the stage for modern trade agreements globally, standing on our core principles of dialogue and engagement but also problem solving and creating new opportunities for our two nations as a model of global cooperation. Advancing our shared prosperity, we work to minimize regulatory disharmony. We build cooperative approaches which advance the success of our economies. And with a long-standing security and intelligence alliance, we advocate for policies that advance global peace while recognizing our role as a refuge to those displaced. With a dedication to innovation, we champion policies that serve both our countries in advancing manufacturing, AI and life-saving vaccines, therapies, and cures. Cooperating on the environmental issues facing the globe, supporting each other when crisis strikes, even a border-closing pandemic. And as COVID-19 variants challenge a return to normalcy, we advocate for new solutions to safely resume travel and business while adapting our integrated supply chains to meet rapidly changing economic needs. Our members are business leaders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from both sides of the border, some of the most recognized brands in the world, because when trade and policy challenges arise, the CABC sets the table, convening dialogues and advocating for our vital partnership, and ensuring that through the peaks and the valleys, we face the world's challenges together. And of course, leading the helm of the CABC is Scotty Greenwood. Without her, my Wednesday night and yours too would be considerably less maple leafy. So let's give a toast to Scotty as we hear from her tonight. Thank you, Christine. Can I say this is great? I mean, this is really great. It's so good to be convened together in person. I mean, think about it. This time last year, we were distanced. We weren't vaccinated. I mean, there was no vaccine. And now, thankfully, due to all kinds of collaboration between the private sector and the public sector, we're together. We're mostly vaccinated and we're breaking bread together in cities across Canada and the United States. I wanna say thank you to our board of directors and to the consular corps that are hosting dinners throughout Canada and the United States tonight. And I also wanna say thank you to the members of Congress, the governors, the premiers, the members of parliament, the luminaries, all of whom have helped to pull together to make this state of the relationship one to really remember. We're very grateful to all of you. You know, since the lockdown a couple of years ago, actually, the CABC actually has grown. We have an entrepreneur circle now, that's new. We have a podcast now, a little bit on that later. We've also expanded our advisory board. We've welcomed Chief Willie Littlechild, who is wonderful. I had the great opportunity to spend time with him in Alberta just a few months ago. We welcomed U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp, uh, Mayor and Ambassador Ron Kirk. So whereas our advisory board used to pretty much just be the ambassadors from both countries, now we have this wonderful group of luminaries, so many more that even than I just listed just now. Thank you to our advisory board, to the Entrepreneur Circle, and to everybody that is making CABC what it is. I mentioned the podcast. It's called Canusa Street. And one of our advisory board members, Governor Ed Rendell, sat down with us at Canusa Street to talk about his former chief of staff. You know who that is. It's the new U.S. Ambassador to Canada, David Cohen. 
We're so excited to congratulate Ambassador Cohen on getting his confirmation from the United States Senate. Soon he'll present credentials in Canada and uh, he's on his way. So we're excited. If you want to hear Ed Rendell talking about David Cohen, check out our podcast, check out Canusa Street uh, and, and I'll leave us a review to tell us what you think about it. You know, it was about nine months ago when President Biden was sworn in and he had his first bilateral meeting with any leader with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Kamala Harris, our vice president, had her first bilateral meetings with her Canadian counterparts. This is a very good sign. And we know that there's a lot of work to be done, including tomorrow at the North American Leaders Summit. The CABC is working hard on not only border policy and protectionism, regulatory harmonization, but all of those things that make this relationship really special. And we will continue to help with that private sector perspective on these big public policy issues, because that's what we do. And we're excited to have been doing it for the last 30 years. So with that, we want to take a moment to thank our members. Without your dedication, your work, your innovation, we wouldn't have medicines and vaccines. We wouldn't have supply chains that although they're stretched, they're working for the essential goods that we need to fill our grocery stores and to help our commerce going. Thank you for persevering through all of this. Merci mille fois. Now, what do weed, wood, and winding roads have in common? No, it's not a Snoop Dogg and Cheryl Crow party. It's Canusa Street, the podcast on all things Canada, U.S., with insights and expertise from policymakers, business titans, and advocates on both sides of the 49th parallel. Canusa Street is not only exploring the greatest challenges facing our relationship today, but also reflecting on the foundation that built our friendship. And it's moderated by Scotty Greenwood of the CABC and Chris Sands with the Wilson Center. So you know they're actually asking the tough questions. If you've already been listening, it's good, right? Good. Are you all having a good time tonight? Well, we're just getting started. Please join us in welcoming our musical guests for tonight, Fifi Dobson and Tyler Shaw performing Lean On Me. Sometimes in our life, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow.
Now that we're all at least into our second round of cocktails, or third, or fourth, who's counting? This is virtual, right? Which is better, hockey or football? I know, we're treading into dangerous waters here. I'm just the messenger. And crossing the goal line is America's favorite pastime, football. And now that we're all in a fighting mood, let's remember what mama says, not everything's a competition. And in that spirit, let's celebrate our patriotism for both our great countries. We have waited for this for a long, long time. In a year of uncertainty, sports found a way. She shoots! Oh! She was set! She scores! Oh, two to Frazier. This ball is hammered to left, and it is way out of here! Despite border closures... Fleming to Canada! Scores! Our two countries were still able to compete, whether in the NBA bubble. Is this the tagger? No! Or in the open air at Augusta. Good looking shot, Corey Connors. How about it? Because sports are about more than the goals. The games and the great moments that have defined our shared history. Sports bring out something more, something bigger, our pride in country and our determination to never give up. In our case, good sportsmanship extends past the field of play and into the stands. And while our history is full of made-for-TV winning moments... Here's a pitch on the way, a swing and a belt! Left field, way back! Blue Jays win it! Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Unbelievable! Here comes the cross. Oh, it's in! Alex Morgan has done it! Peter Orr is coming around. He will dive in! He is safe! Team Canada wins the gold medal! Here's a shot! Henderson made a wild stab for fell. Here's another shot right by the door! Whether it's great moments of the past. Golden in the lead, here comes Bailey, he's got it! 9 8 4, a world record for Donovan Bailey and a gold medal! Or rising to the challenge after this year's lockdown. Oh, Sports inspire us, they unify us, and they remind us to never give up. She is going to win the Olympic all-around gold medal. Thank you for always having my back. Thank you for cheering for me. I love you, New York, and hope to see you next year. Uh, well, if that doesn't inspire a love of country, I'm not sure what will. And now we invite you to listen to leaders from both sides of the border on the state of our relationship. Thank you to members of Congress, members of the United States Senate, members of Parliament, governors, premiers, and to all those who contributed tonight. Everyone in this room understands the importance of the relationship shared by our two nations. As we're neighbors, our economies are intricately linked and we share the same democratic values. And the strength and success of the U.S. relationship with Canada is deeply personal. I've always recognized the relationship between Canada and the U.S. as one that is very special. It's the quintessential partnership. We are friends, allies, and partners. And we've got to make sure that relationship stays strong forever. There is so much 
connectivity and interconnectedness between our two countries. This collaboration between our two countries is vital to our trading partnership, our economy, and our shared values. The United States relationship with Canada is so important because you are our neighbors, you are our partners, and you are our allies. We have a long history of having a great relationship with Canada and America. We share a deep friendship and an enduring partnership that has enabled us to tackle many challenges together. Keeping our relationship strong is crucial on both sides of the border. It's so important that the United States and Canada are wonderful trading partners. We boost each other's global competitiveness. I have seen firsthand our two countries' ability and dedication to work together. Thanks to the USMCA, which was ratified in early 2020, this partnership will only grow stronger. We are key partners in innovation. Our partnership, our friendship, is one that powers the world. Our storied history in free trade has brought our country's prosperity while bolstering our friendship. Expanding trade between our two countries gives America's farm country an opportunity to pass on their life's work to future generations, and it gives Canadian consumers access to high-quality American products. This exciting agreement will benefit all our countries and move our economies forward. We are working together to reduce emissions in the oil and gas sector, but also to develop renewables, storage, and nuclear for the energy sector of tomorrow. Our partnership creates millions of jobs on both sides of the border. It's the principal economic reason that we all need to be very intentional about the relationship. We are countries that have to make stuff, invent things, export to the world. That's why our trading relationship and the supply chain issues are so important. Even with the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic, we continue working together to ensure that essential goods and services could continue to move across the borders. Needless to say, these last 20 months have been hard for all of us. But I am proud to say that the pandemic served to reinforce our friendship as our supply lines kept open and kept food on the tables across North America. The Gordie Howe International Bridge being built right here in Windsor, Detroit, is a symbol of the close relationship between our two countries. It is an essential example of what democracy can do for the rest of the world. We are friends and allies, and in time of need, we are always there for each other. Both nations are stronger because of our joint economic and national security alliances. With your help, the U.S.-Canada relationship will continue to inspire productive diplomacy. Canada and the United States stand together as beacons of democracy. We have a shared history, but perhaps most importantly, we have a shared future. Today's challenges are opportunities for the U.S.-Canada relationship to flourish tomorrow. We look forward to continuing our work with our Canadian neighbours and friends. A shining example to the rest of the world of what the relationships between countries should be like. Of two neighbours that have always lived and worked together in harmony. Canada and US is such an important relationship that no one should ever take for granted. America's relationship with Canada and yours with us has an immense impact on my state's families, businesses and our communities. No matter where I go here in the US, Americans tell me of their connections to Canada. Maybe they have a Canadian parent or spouse, or business partner. Maybe they spent time studying, or working, or traveling in Canada. It is one big genealogical tree with very strong roots firmly planted on both sides of the border. Americans are our neighbors. They're our economic partners. And in many cases, such as my own, there are extended family members too. I believe there's a million Americans are actually living in Canada, I'm sure just as many Canadians living south of the border. My very favorite thing about Canada is my daughter-in-law from Toronto. Having lived in a border community for more than 40 years, I've had the opportunity to experience many uh, delightful opportunities. My maple leaf uh, heart is still north of the 49th. We stand shoulder to shoulder for the benefit of our nation, for the benefit of our people. Because there is no greater, closer, stronger, a more important relationship between any two countries in the world than the one that exists between the United States and Canada. Thank you, Canada, for your centuries of friendship and support. And now a word from the U.S. Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. Good evening. Last week, President Biden's cabinet gathered in the White House for a discussion 
about how America is building back better. At the same time, the administration was preparing for what's happening tomorrow, the first North American Leaders Summit in five years. These conversations are connected because in today's world, more than ever before, we need strong partnerships to move forward successfully. That's why the Biden-Harris administration is committed to multilateralism and we are focused on one of the most important international friendships that the U.S. enjoys, our relationship with Canada. The President's first official phone call and first bilateral meeting were both with Prime Minister Trudeau, and one of our first international documents was a roadmap for a renewed U.S.-Canada partnership. These ties are personal as well. As you may know, Vice President Kamala Harris spent most of her formative years in Montreal. And as a native of Boston, I spent many of my formative years focused on the Montreal Canadiens and the Edmonton Oilers as they made our life in Boston difficult. In all seriousness, I have always felt close ties to Canada. We have so much in common, including our values. As mayor of Boston, I made a special visit to learn how Canadian cities are helping those with substance use disorder. Now, I'm grateful to be working with my Canadian counterparts to ensure high labor standards, workers' rights, and equal pay for both women at home and around the world. The U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement is an important vehicle for this work in the context of the USMCA. We are working together to support historic labor reforms in Mexico, and we are strengthening our enforcement of prohibitions on goods made with forced labor. This work we do together strengthens both of our nations. In the words of our roadmap for a renewed U.S.-Canada partnership, our historic alliance and steadfast friendship endured because we invest in each other's success. Those words are important, and we are turning them into action, partnering to end the COVID-19 pandemic, taking action on climate change, cooperating on defense and security, working together for a shared economic success, and reaffirming our commitment to equality, justice, and workers' rights. Let me close by thanking everyone associated with this wonderful celebration. In Canada and the U.S., we truly are better when we're together. And on behalf of President Biden, I want to thank you all for what you do to advance our common goals. Thank you, Secretary Walsh. We are all looking forward to the summit tomorrow between our two nations and Mexico. Now the best time of the night. It's time to present the CABC's Corporate Leadership Award. The Canadian American Business Council celebrates the outstanding achievements in the business community with our Corporate Leadership Award. Last year, recognizing shipping giant UPS and realizing how something small like a brown package could bring a ray of hope during the darkness of lockdown. That ray of hope now shining like a beacon with this year's Leadership Award winner. The criteria for the award includes job creation, sustainability, and remarkable innovation. This year's award recipient is the epitome of innovation, facing a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic head-on. The speed, scale, and sophistication with which it is spreading and impacting our health is really unprecedented. The race to develop a vaccine, or more accurately, a number of vaccines, is a sprint that the U.S. has not tried on this scale ever before. Championing and challenging its employees to do the impossible create a life-saving vaccine in less than one year's time. We know how to make vaccines for a lot of things, but we've never tried to do it with the clock ticking like this. In the last 170 years, Pfizer has advanced cures and treatments for the most feared diseases. But for us tonight, their work in the last two years to combat COVID-19 is emblematic of the type of leadership needed to take on world-level challenges. Responsible leadership matters. Science matters. Starting with thinking big, bigger than ever before, asking their own scientists to rapidly develop the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine in a fraction of the usual development time. Dubbed Project Lightspeed, this initiative succeeded by going against the grain with the decision to utilize new mRNA technology a first for vaccine development. That is just such an extraordinary advance in vaccinology right now. Their vaccine becoming the first to be approved by the FDA and Health Canada. Following development, Pfizer continued to answer the call of the global community, asking their engineers to once again do the never before, manufacture billions of doses in record time, and offering a light at the end of a dark pandemic tunnel. 
we're beginning to see what some doctors believe is a significant step forward to getting more people in this country vaccinated. Pfizer shows us that by working together, the power of the public-private partnership is a force to be reckoned with. Utilizing the tireless scientific innovation and engineering of their own employees while relying on federal government to secure their access to necessary ingredients. The FDA giving full approval to Pfizer's two-dose COVID-19 vaccine, making it the first COVID vaccine in the United States to move beyond emergency use authorization. Operating one of the most sophisticated supply chain systems in the industry with 200 suppliers globally to ensure vaccine equity. Pfizer expects to produce 3 billion doses of the vaccine this year, moving the world out of the pandemic one shot at a time. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Pfizer's 80,000 colleagues around the world, I'm honored and humbled to accept the CABC's Corporate Leadership Award. Pfizer and CABC share a legacy of establishing successful collaborations and of working with others who share our values and our unwavering support of innovation. Life sciences companies often challenge policymakers to think differently about how to encourage innovation, which over the years has sparked rigorous debates and in some cases led to an unwillingness to collaborate. However, COVID-19 gave us a good reason and a mandate, I could say, to improve those relationships for the greater good of mankind. And the results have been nothing short of phenomenal. From the start, the Canadian and US governments understood that we all needed to do things differently. Rolling regulatory submissions, managing ultra-cold supply chains, direct delivery to distribution sites, staying flexible to accommodate manufacturing upgrades, and even supporting us when facing trade export restrictions. This understanding and commitment led to early and frequent discussions where every party helped find new approaches to every aspect of the response plan. At the center of our work were patients and our collective belief that we need to follow the science to ensure our plans were grounded in the facts as we knew them to be. Understandably, of course, much attention has been paid recently to what Pfizer did and is doing in the battle against COVID-19. And we are proud of that. But that's only part of our story. Pfizer's purpose? Breakthroughs that change patients' lives fuels everything we do and reflects both our passion for science and our commitment to patients across multiple therapeutic areas. Let me close with a few notes of thanks. Thank you, the CABC, for the important work you do and for honoring the work and the men and women I'm proud and privileged to lead. I also accept this award on behalf of our collaborator, BioNTech, and our many external partners, without whom we could not have delivered our vaccine so quickly. Thank you, Prime Minister Trudeau and President Biden for your thoughtful and compassionate leadership during this global health crisis. And lastly, thank you to all the distribution and shipping partners and the healthcare professionals who are on the front lines placing jobs in arms and helping build vaccine confidence. Your contributions to society are immeasurable and will long be remembered. Stay well. All right, don't forget, sign up for the newsletter. And as the kids say, follow us on TikTok. Oh, we don't have a TikTok. All right, follow us on Insta, Facebook, whatever we have. Go bug Scotty about it. But it wouldn't be a night of fun if we didn't have some laughs like last year. Watch. Make fun of the great white north all you want. It's the best country in the world. Mm -hmm. The social experiments. USA. 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 Okay, okay. USA. Well, you know, what does that even prove? Okay, you chat anything, people will join in. Canada.
Canada! Canada! Okay, they won't chant anything. Made for TV laughs. We're kind of on our way to the North Pole. Oh, a car won't take you there anyway. But if you like, you can take my snowmobile. Really? You just give it to us? Oh, sure, that's what Canadian hospitality is all about. With big screen moments. I'll tell you another thing, the beer sucks. <laughs> And of course, a sketch comedy goldmine. The term overindulgence has become applicable to every facet of American life. Wait, you're a black Canadian? Obviously, dog. I mean, like, yo, there's thousands of us. I'm sure you've met a few of us before. <laughs> no. Nope. With Canadians poking fun at their neighbor from the South. You ever ask a Canadian what they think of an American? <laughs> What about you guys? You got anything nice to say? <laughs> oh, sure, when there's one around, yeah. Yeah. We're not stupid. We know there's a good chance they're armed. Do we coexist together? Because we're all Canadian. We're part of Canada, and we're bonding together against the common enemy, the United States. Our relationship is a gem for late night hosts. It's the Raptors team slogan. Have you heard it? We the North. You see it everywhere. And besides it being bothersome from a grammar standpoint, Toronto is not the North. Let, let me show you here. Maine is the North. Montana is the North. Toronto is part of Canada. You know what part of Canada it is? It's the South part of Canada. And don't forget, Canadian politeness. It's hard for me to accept compliments because I'm Canadian. Uh, and, it, and in Canada, uh, you cannot brag. They don't like you being all briggity braggity. You know, we'll sit around and tell each other what we're thankful for, and then we'll apologize if it feels like bragging. And Americans, well, Americanness. They are our greatest friends, our strongest allies. They are kind. They are generous. They have an uncanny ability to go on at great lengths on subjects they know absolutely nothing about. What the hell is this? Oh, curling. Um, it's a sport. Play Wrong. The answer we were looking for was, I don't care, it's dumb. Let's go buy something that's bad for us and then sue the people who made it. That's American, Robin. You, know, you have to stop saying that you're going to move to Canada whenever you're mad at something in the US. As a Canadian, I'm sorry, but no, you can't. I know we're friendly, but Canada's not your safe house. I mean, we barely let Canadians into Canada anymore, so please, pick somewhere else. Canada, America, keeping us laughing at each other and ourselves. And remember those airline tickets I kept teasing? We wanna thank our sponsor, Air Canada, tonight. Here's the big moment. Scan the QR code right now and follow the instructions on your phone to enter the contest. Air Canada is rebuilding and restoring post-pandemic through the dedication and hard work of its employees. Thank you so much to Air Canada. And on that note, I bring you to the end of our celebration. Thank you again to our sponsors and to you, the folks that foster our friendship and build our partnership daily. Good night. Oh, Canada. Hi, everybody. We are the Tenors. I am Clifton. I'm Fraser. Uh, I was born in Canada, and I'm in this beautiful group that travels across our border between Canada and the United States uh, to share our music, and we've done for many years. And one thing I've noticed, that whether we're in a venue in Canada or in the United States, it really does feel like home. Uh, we share so much, not just a border, but culture and language and history. And uh, it's a beautiful place to live and so many things that we share and that we have in common. So we are grateful to zigzag the border and share our experience on both sides. That's right. We've had a great connection with CABC over the years. Uh, I grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia, but I now live in Westchester, New York, and I'm raising my family there. So, of course, we have the Canada-US relationship happening uh, on all fronts. Um, we also have a little special guest here today. That's We're right. Not so little. Come over here, Come on American in. friend. This is Jake Hoot, everybody. Tell them where you're from. I am from Nashville, Tennessee. 
That's right, right across the border down there. That's right. And we're so similar. So he won uh, NBC's The Voice a couple years ago, and he performed an arrangement of Winter Song, uh, one of arra our arrangement of Winter Song on the show. And we've become uh, great friends, and we're actually uh, recording, and we wrote a song together for this Christmas called When Winter Has Come and Gone. When Christmas Has Come and Gone. Yes. That's right. See, I'm so Canadian, I was thinking yeah. winter. Yeah, <laughs> it's close. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is one example of what's great about the Canadian-American relationship. It's collaborating with artists from both sides of the border, and we're just grateful that you're up in Canada. Oh, thank you all for hosting me. I, I love it up here. I was telling Clifton, Toronto has been amazing, so it's thank you all so much. And congrats to Pfizer on winning your award. I've got the double. See you guys soon. Well, listen, I love Canada. I love, you know, we do a lot of work, Hollywood work, up in Vancouver. I can't tell you the number of movies and things I've shot around Vancouver. And then uh, Edmonton, I shot a movie there one time in the winter time. I've never been that cold in my life. And uh, I've been all around Toronto, everything. But just, you don't need to move there, just travel there. I understand you run a very important organization that deals with businesses back and forth there. But it doesn't mean you have to move there. I've crossed the border many, many times, and uh, it's, uh, it's always interesting and uh, always wonderful how different Canada is from the United States and also how much we share as well. So, so uh, sending love, et au revoir.